All right, you guys. All right, so I, as you, as you probably know, this have been filming my layered petals class. So I got some flowers to have in my photo shoot. <laughs> I did my own photo shoot and I have to tell you guys my flower, my flower story. So this is January. It's not always, you know, we're not gonna have roses. Well, you might have a few roses out and about, but not the kind that I wanted. And um, peonies and all of that good stuff, you can't really buy. So I went to the store. So here's what I, I'm gonna show you all the different things I bought and talk to you guys about it. All right, so I bought these roses at our local grocery store and they're really sweet um it's a good store it's not like a big um safeway store it's an independent little store and so i got these but i couldn't find the color i wanted so these ran about 15 dollars, i think and there was a couple more of them in there and then i got some tiny little carnations there too these are probably smaller than they look but aren't they so cute so i got these but it still didn't have like the color I wanted. So wait till you guys see what I bought. Oh my gosh. All right, look at this. Look at that. All right, so this is a local florist called Seascape Florist in our area. And the reason why I wanted to talk to you guys about these today is because I was using the roses for my photo shoot and actually some of them I took the petals off and you probably see them in some of my designs later. Um, but I, I fell in love with the, these are the en anemones I think. So there's two there. And the reason I wanted to talk to you guys about it is not only do these roses smell amazing, but the price was about the same. Okay, so these were a little bit more. This was 20 bucks, but I got all of these flowers and they're absolutely gorgeous. So when you're thinking about buying flowers and it's so easy to pick them up in a grocery store, there's something to be said about going into a local florist. You get to hand pick them. So I just went in and I picked the ones that I wanted. I put them together myself and then I'm going to use them in my photo shoot, but also I'm going to be able to enjoy them. And, um, definitely I asked the women and about like, how do I keep them as long as possible? And it's just every day you just cut a tiny bit off the stem and always change the water. So that's one thing I used to not do because I'm lazy. I would cut the stems, but I would never change the water. So always change your water. There's some kind of wives tale about maybe putting a tiny bit of soap in there, but she said, no, just change the water. And so when you're thinking about flowers, spend that extra three or four dollars and get them at your florist because look at this i can't even believe it so you know how i'm working i'm going to show you guys later to my class stuff but my inspiration for so much of this layer petals ready i mean look at those colors ah! okay i was so excited i had to share with you now they oh they also have the these little tiny ranunculus at the same floor. So these were part of what I paid for. Um, oh, I just think I spilled water there. So the other thing I wanna tell you that is you may not be able to get flowers. You may not even be able to go to a florist. So look at this. I think I showed this last year too. This is a peony that is not in bloom and you can't buy it at a florist, but it's fake. <laughs> Isn't that crazy? Okay, so I got this at Beverly's, which is similar to a Michael's. Um, and I think you guys all have Michael's, right? So here's another way of getting your inspiration to some of your floral art. And if you can't get real flowers, then you can always get the fake flowers. I love the real ones because they smell so good and they change every day. You know, they just keep growing and changing. Uh, so anyway, so that's my floral stuff I wanted to show you. I just can't even believe that red fuchsia rose. Oh, crazy. Okay, so what we're gonna do today is work on our journal spread. Well, I'm gonna work on a journal spread with you guys. And 
you don't have to be working on it, but if you want to, always just grab a piece of paper and doodle and you don't have to have a journal. I wanna make sure everybody knows that. I'm just using my journal for like fun and some things that um, I wanna show you. So let me put the camera down. Hopefully it's not upside down, it's the right way, way. All right, so one thing, I wanted to go back to the journal that I worked on with you guys uh, the first day, which was, oh my gosh, it was last week. Was it last week? Yeah, it was last week. And we, you know, we, we were using, if people are joining us now um, who weren't here with us last week, what I did was I found my word of the year, found it. I figured out what my word is. You don't have to have a word of the year. I just always like to have one. Mine was focus. And I have that in here. And then what I did was, some of this I did on the live and you can go back to the replay to see it, but then I just kept working a few more hours on it. I was having so much fun. This is collage art that Tisha Moore, um, who's an amazing artist, sold. And you really, I don't think you can buy this anymore. We were talking about it last week. Tisha Moore is an amazing artist. I took her workshop when she was one of the first teachers I ever did an online workshop and an in-person workshop about nine years ago. And unfortunately she had a stroke and I don't believe she's doing art the way she was doing it. So her Etsy shop is no longer open. Um, but what I wanted to share, and I talked about this last week is if you have any art that you love that you've done before, take a photo of it and then you can take it to a local printer and just on regular nice copy paper, just nice copy paper, it's a different type of laser jet, um, you can then cut it up and use it in collage. So that's what this is about. I think on the, after the live was over, I think what I did was I ended up cutting out some collage papers and just finding more bits. And then what I like to do is I put in my things that I like and then I start adding all my details with the paint pens and all that good stuff. And so that's sort of what I was filling in. I also did the definition of what focus meant to me. Um, okay, and so then we were doing our ink splots. <laughs> and this is an ink splot that I just see angel wings here and they're so beautiful. I don't really know what to do with it without wrecking it. So I have sort of put this on a little bit of a pause right now, but here's the ink spot. And let me show you real quick what ink spots should look like when I'm working on them today would be, I just took my acrylic ink, made a circle, took the page and flipped it over. And I'm gonna be working on this one today. But what happened was um, last week when I did it, I, my paper, I wasn't dry. And so when I shut my book and I opened it up, I did, it did tear. So this is, I wanted to show you this this morning. This is what you do if you have a piece that's tear, tore, tear, toward. Hey, teared. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay, so, I only did one half because I wanted to show you this is sort of what it looks like. So you just work with that page. So I took some beautiful flowers and I worked with some of the ink splotches and I'm continually building up on this spread right now. So that's what this is all about. I just wanted to show you um, some things. This is a beautiful Dahlia that was on a cover of a local grocery store. It's sort of in our area. It's called Edibles and it's all like local farm and produce. And this was the cover. So when you see something and maybe you, you know, you're done reading the magazine and take it, you know, rip off that cover and put it somewhere. Cause I had it from this summer and I never used it. And it was perfect to fill in that big splotch that got ripped. And then this is when I did that I wanted to sort of show you how I, you know, go from an ink splotch to something really pretty and all I'm doing is I'm completely turning this into like a meditative, um, just really thought, like I'm not really thinking too much. I'm just sort of in the zone making lines and drawings and just doing doodlings. That's all I'm doing. I'm not trying to take my ink splotch and turn them into something, even though 
um, you very well may could do that like with wings and butterflies and all that good stuff. In fact, the one I'm gonna do today actually looks like a fish, but it's not intentional. So take your splotches, make sure they are completely dry. Leave your journal open, okay? And I'm gonna show you some of the tools I used. And all I was doing was just making lines. I was watching a Netflix show and just making lines as I was doing it. And then I just kept working on it and I really, really enjoyed it. One thing that I do too is if you, here, I'll show you right here. If your ink splotch goes over the edge, which mine did, then I just incorporate that into the design. So this is from the splotch going right over. And then I had some on the sides too. So that's what that's all about. All right, so, okay, what does this look like? <laughs> it looks like a guppy. <laughs> so I thought I would just kind of work on this one and show you some of the tools I used to work with. And again, like it doesn't have to look like anything. Like, I don't know, that doesn't look like anything to me, but um, we're gonna work on this one. What I recommend doing too, if you haven't done this yet, if you haven't done your splotches yet, I put ink down first on my page like this. I put ink down with a sponge brush and let that dry and see, I didn't let that dry before, but I'll use this paper. This is why I love these journals, you guys, is because the um, pages are so nice and thick, you know, and that's kind of why I, I like using it. So if it does, stick together and rip so you can still use it. All right, so I've got my, my little fishies here. I'll probably just work on one because it does take a long time, but I wanted to show you some of the tools that I use. So I could not, I went into my local art store over the week and I could not find any pen. There are like, everybody's out of inventory after the holidays, but these are great and they're uniball. Signo, I think that's how you pronounce them. My mom loves these and she got me hooked on them, but they're out of ink, so I couldn't really use them. But this is a great white pen. Um, oh, I'm just seeing Michelle was has a comment about the journal. The journal is Creative Dilutions. It's by Ranger and it's fantastic. And I just really love the quality of the paper, so. Anyway, just wanted to let you guys know about that in case you're new to the group. This is um, one that I picked up, the Jelly Roll pen. Do you guys remember like five or six years ago, these were such a, I mean, my kids were crazy about them. And so we have a ton, but of course they're all out of ink. So I went to our local art store and picked up a couple. I'm not too sure why one's, maybe this is the size. One's an eight, one's a five. The other tools I love is the Posca pens are my my absolute favorite paint pen. And paint pens are another great thing because you have all the different size tips. So I um, have a bunch of different ones here. And Suzanne, I totally agree with you on dilutions. I wish it was white as well. The page is cream and not white. Um, and here, let me show you. Oh, wow. Stretching. See the difference? It's it's um, but that's why I that's why I actually put inks on all of my pages and I start with color. That's why I do a color on them. And Sharpies are another good tool. Sharpies not only in just the regular Sharpie pen but Sharpies in the paint pen. That's another great one. And then, you know, you've got your regular just black pens that work great too. And um, anything really to make some lines. So um, I'm gonna just do a, a little bit with you guys. What I'll do is I'm just gonna go for it. I have no, <laughs> I have no idea, I haven't thought too much about it, but what I might wanna do is go in first with my white lines and then go around the outside in case my lines are all over the place. So let's take the jelly roll. And sometimes you need to give it a little bit of a squiggle. 
Hopefully you guys can see this okay. So I'm gonna look at this and think, okay, I'm not gonna really care too much about making it into a fish. I might put a little eye there, but I really just wanna have fun with the line work. And so if you guys remember, um, Suzette in our group posted some beautiful artwork she was doing with acrylic, with alcohol inks, which I have yet to try. And alcohol inks, um, she was doing a lot of line work like this on hers, and it's so pretty. I don't know if she used pen. I'll have to ask her. She's in Australia, so I don't know if she's live with us today or not. Okay, so I'm just going... Hopefully you can see this. I'm just going around my shape and making these lines like this. It sort of gives it a, like a three-dimensional look. It's a little hard to see. I'll I'll move it up real close to the camera so you can see. But I'm just kind of in one motion, too. And I don't really care if it goes over the lines. I'm just kind of having fun and um, keeping my pen down the whole time. So all I'm doing is taking the jelly pen and just going around like this. It actually looks like a donut. But it... To doing this kind of gives it like that 3D look. And then what I'll do is I'll go around the outside with a um, probably a Sharpie or a paint pen just to make that pop a little bit more. Maybe do something in the inside. But what I'll do is I'll do this line work. Hopefully it's, I, put, I picked it up and then I always had to make sure it's straight. And then um, see what I look at, and I'll look at the line work, and then I'll just sort of see, okay, well, what what's next? So it's just a nice, you know, especially this week, right? It's just a nice way to relax. And using this as a starting point. That's why I love using the acrylic inks because the acrylic inks are smooth. If I did this with paint, if I took my acrylic paints and I made splotches, which you certainly can, then I have a feeling that it wouldn't be as smooth to write on. The other thing I like to do with this jelly roll too is just hold it straight up and make some squiggles. How much fun is this, right? We're just like, now I'm like a two-year-old. I'm just making squiggles and white lines. And holding it straight up and down. All right, I think I'm going to see if we can make a little face out of this. Now this is the other jelly roll. This is a little bit thicker. I probably should have done that the first time. Okay, I have no idea what a goldfish guppy eye is, but let's pretend. Maybe I'll make it like that. <laughs> He looks kind of scary or scared. He's scary or scared. Let's see. I'm not too sure if my eyeball will stay. But anyway, so I'm going to do some more of this um, line work. This is a little thicker. It's a little easier to see. It's almost like these could be, you know, the fin, the scales, fins, scales. And then I'm gonna take one of my paint pens. I've got this purple. 
And I'm gonna go around the outside by shape. Now, if you have splotches that you want to keep abstract, then you know you could be doing this on those shapes, or you could be turning it into something. Whoopsie, I just smeared. <clears throat> We'll fix that later. One of the reasons why I like Posca the best is the color choices. I just can't find anywhere else. The, you know, you can get so many different ones. Look at all these tubs I have. And there's just such a variety. I also like them because there's a variety of size and um, points. So a different, you know, nibs and things. This one, I might change the color completely, make it more of my, you know, coral, I guess. It could be a coral or a little bat. Um, what size Posca pen is the purple? This is a 3M. So let me show you the different sizes. Posca comes in different sizes. This is a three, this is, uh, sorry, this is a one, this is a three, and this is a five. And I'll, I'll use them all so you can see. Um, I sort of use it on my journal page. I really do like the three because it sort of covers enough without being too thick. And um, then for writing, I do like the, the one. So let me get a, I think I want to do some bright. Who doesn't want to have bright, beautiful colors? Let's see. Um... I know I always blame my kids, but seriously, they use up my paint pens all the time. Let's go with, I'm gonna put some white down and I might go over this if this dries in time for us. I'll do these circles and then I'll go over them again with another circle inside of it. But this one particular um, marker I have in my hand, this Posca, I think it's been used so much. It's a little bit watery, so it shouldn't really be this watery. I like doing the jelly rolls for some of the thinner lines, and these are a lot less expensive than these. So I usually don't do all my line work in paint pens. I like having some alternates here. I'm not too sure if I'm digging that eye or not. Um, what other colors do I wanna grab? Okay, here's a thick pink that I'm just going to go around again. It's about the same color as the background, but it will give it a little bit of a subtle. Then I can cover up that mistake. Now you could also be thinking about, do I want to add collage pieces to this or do I want to keep it strictly a pen work? I mean, that's what's so nice about being able to take your journals and just go right in front of the TV if you're just chilling. Like I do a lot of this at nighttime when I'm absolutely exhausted and the boys are all watching basketball. And so I just go in there and pay no attention until the very end of a basketball game. And, um, you know, I'm in there with them but I'm working in this and I'm just making lines. That guy, okay, I might have to get rid of the eye or make, you know what, I'm gonna make it blue. Let's see if it's dry enough. 
So doing a felt tip marker is probably not the best idea on that one because it was getting all clumpy. <laughs> all right, let's kind of give, let me just get rid of this eye. Maybe make it just a shape like that. Um, let's see, what else do I want to add to this one? So what I like to do too is go in to some of these lines. I'm just showing you different ways to kind of work with the lines here. Is this is a fuchsia that I really, really like a lot. I'll go in and pull out some of these lines. You can get some interesting things happening in here. All right. And let's see, I'm gonna just show you guys a few other things that I do, and then I'll probably just work on it this week and post about it. So you guys make sure you post about yours. And then I wanna show you some art from my new class and some other new exciting things. So otherwise I could be here all day long just filling this in. The idea is just to sort of use it as, you know, you may be at a place where you don't wanna pull out your paints and you don't wanna pull out your, you know, big things that you're working on. It's so awesome to just grab these little sketchbooks and some paint pens and some markers and just be a kid again. That's all what that's all it is. That's all what it's about. And it really does kind of like wind you down, you know, instead of getting on your phone late at night and checking things and, and looking at stuff and all the bad news, you know, try doing some sketches in your sketchbook, doodling in your sketchbook. Um, let's see. I'm going to go with a blue right here. I have no idea why. But that's this, the, the markers can really fill in some big holes like that too. Maybe I'll do that right here. So I'd be excited to see what you guys come up with. And some things I'll probably end up doing is, I might end up taking this one page and doing, you know, it'll be kind of fun. I'm just ta just saying this out loud <laughs> for the first time it entered my brain. Um, what I think I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this in line work and, pen, and pens, and then I'm gonna do this side in collage and, um, you know, cutting out stuff, cutting out papers and gluing them in and doing them together and see what you guys think because that's kind of like a fun thing to do, right? All right, so I'm gonna move this aside and let me know too if you guys have any questions on that or, or um, the one thing just to remember is make sure your page is completely dry before you close it, <laughs> okay? And... Jelly rolls are a really good, inexpensive way to um, get some lines down. Sharpies are, you can find these in most places. I also like the, um, I like the thinner ones, but you wanna get water-based and not oil-based. And extra fine is better for me than fine. This is fine, but I like the extra fine. I just can't, uh, I just don't have any with me um, to show you guys and the Poscas, so Posca pens are great. Um, all right, so let me put this aside, and I'm super excited. I'm gonna show you guys a couple things, and then I'm gonna flip us around. Um, okay, so <clears throat> as you can see, hold on, let me get my floral bouquet. That might actually be bad in the camera because it might get like, it might focus on that and not what I wanna show you. <laughs> so maybe I'll do my little pretty bouquet here. 
put that there so you can see my my inspiration so in the layered petals class which i'm super excited about you guys i am going to fingers crossed launch it pre-registration um on tuesday that's my goal is to actually have it launched the day before the 20th 20th is my date that i put out into the world but i'd like to launch it on tuesday and you'll you guys will be if you're in my if you're on my newsletter or in this group, you'll be the first to know because I'll let you guys know, but it's going to be um, early bird registration and then it will start in February. So one of the projects is we're gonna make this journal and it's a little homemade journal and I think I've shown you guys this a few times. Um, it's really fun. It's a way to kind of get loose and we're gonna work on finding color pa uh, palettes that we like and really just kind of work with the florals that are really round and deep within the layers. And I wanted to show you um, the way, the how I got inspired by this originally started by finding these little cedar rosettes in my backyard off of a cedar tree. And then the more I looked, you know, I always have liked these and I've done those in my the February 28 day challenge last year is I did a lot of this similar size, uh, um, similar shape. And then I started seeing these everywhere. And then I was like, oh my gosh, they're everywhere. So all of these types of circular and really um, detail, but also there's so much going on and they're just, you know, round and round and um, in the peony well this is fake so i can do this but you know just the layers and the petals are so beautiful for me and they're so inspirational i just want to paint them and draw them and so in the journal it's just completely getting loose and that's what we're doing we're just getting loose with paints and pens and collage work so we can work on some other projects and so that's one part of it the other part is we're going to create a piece that we're going to be able to put on a cradle board and cradle boards and you don't have to do a cradle board either because i'm also going to show you i mean it's the same thing but we'll be working on paper and this paper is really nice and thick it's going to have collage pieces on it and then you're, we're gonna be able to take this and put it on our cradle board so that you can actually then hang these literally right, you just hang them right on the wall. There's no need for framing. Um, they're really beautiful. You can get these panels in so many places and I'm gonna show you guys. Um, I'll have all the information on where to get them. So that, to put them on the boards will be an optional part of the class. They're also, you know, perfect to make as five by sevens, six by eights that you can put in a frame. And so here's a couple more. And again, they're all sort of based on the circular rosette style. Um, and I'm gonna be giving a giveaway once the class has started for some of these pieces too. And I just had so much fun and I just was so inspired to do it. So this is a second part of the class. And that gets you um, a little bit. We're gonna pick our color palettes. And then, I'm gonna bring us back over here. Hopefully we're not upside down, totally. Totally. Um, okay, ready? Then, you guys were so awesome last week by helping me figure this out. We are gonna do Canvas, okay? So Canvas, do I have to stand? <laughs> Maybe. Um, Overwhelmingly, everybody wanted to do canvas. So that's what we're gonna do. So we're gonna start small in the journal, then we're going to go a little bit bigger into the cradle boards, which is just a fun little way to have some piece of art on your wall, especially like in those areas of your wall that that there's it's too small for something to just hang. Like how sweet so funny how sweet is this to hang up and then we'll be able to work on our large piece i'm going to be working in the class on a 16 by 20 which is bigger than the other classes that i've done and you can really work on anything you want so here's my goal is to have the early bird registration start next tuesday 
it might be in the evening, like one in the morning. Um, and then it's going to go live on February 12th, I believe, which is a Thursday or a Friday. And it will be um, $40 for the early registration and then 60 once it goes live. So there's like three weeks. You guys can ask me any questions or whatever. Um, it's gonna be so much fun. There's gonna be a Facebook group just for the class and other good stuff. So. I also have something else I'm so excited to share with you guys, okay? It's all in my head, but it's gonna be awesome. Um, so over the last year, I have been doing these lives with you guys, and I'm gonna continue to do lives, but over the last year, you guys have been asking me to do Zoom virtual classes, and I'm gonna do it, so I have new internet that we're gonna install so I won't have any internet issues. And so here's my idea. And you guys can let me know too how you wanna tweak it or whatever. Um, is I'm hoping to start them at the end of February and do three or four. And my goal is to do like one a month. And it's gonna be about a two hour, probably two and a half hour class. And um, I'm thinking, I'm thinking about doing watercolors uh, to get started because I have a lot of classes online that are um, acrylics and I was thinking of doing some really awesome stuff with you guys. It's gonna be um, a Zoom class where you'll be able to see each other. <laughs> Wouldn't that be awesome? I'd actually be able to see people. And um, we'll have Q&A and it's gonna be so much fun. So, okay, so you can either email me or, or make comments or tell me things that you would want in a class. But I just thought, you know, watercolor dries fast. I love watercolor. It was what I used before I got into acrylics. It's something that we can do in a couple hours and it's a way to experiment. So I actually love doing watercolors and acrylics, to, acrylic inks together. Do I have a bottle here? So not acrylics, but the inks. It's not gonna be a ton of art supplies. You don't have to go out and buy a bunch of stuff, but it will be a way for us to connect with each other, see each other. And so here's what I'm thinking that, um, so once a month, I'm trying to find a time that can reach as many people as possible. So it might be like either nine to 11 my time, um, just so I know Sandy, that's early for you because she's in a beautiful Hawaii, but maybe, I don't know, we'll figure it out. We'll figure that out. Um, they'll be either in a bundle or single classes and they're only gonna be $18 or three for 40, which is cheaper than a yoga class. So <laughs> hopefully that's fine. Um, but anyway, I'm so excited. It's been noodling in my head for a really long time and you guys have been asking for it. I know we can do it. It's gonna be awesome. We'll record them so that way um, you guys can get them too and I think that's what I think that's what I want to tell you right now. I don't think there's anything else, but let me know too if you have any thoughts. So I can't tell you what we're gonna do in our next week's journal page because I don't know, <laughs> but I'm gonna think about it. Um, but I also want you guys to know that next week I want to do a little Q and A. So it may not be a ton of journal work, but I want you because we have so many new people to the group. I want you to send me a comment or a message or whatever, um, a Q&A question that you might have for me, whether it's a technique or whether it's how I got started or whether it's um, how to do an inspiration, whatever. You let me know because I'm here for you and I wanna continue to be here live. So I just wanna make sure you guys know that the lives and the Zoom will be different types of things. I just wanted to throw that out there as, another option for us to be together and to go deeper into some artwork um, that you know we can get done in a couple hours. So, all right, um, it's a big week. Oh, I forgot, there's one more thing I wanna tell you, something that's so exciting. Oh my gosh, I can't believe I forgot this. <laughs> Hopefully you guys are still on there. Um, I am so honored, but I was on a podcast last week and it's airing on the 20th inauguration day. Um, also the day that I'm launching my class or all the day after, cause I'm trying to get it done a day early. Um, anyway, have you guys heard of the left brain artist? 
The Left Brain Artist is by, it's a, it's a, um, the interviewer is Suzanne Redman and she interviews so many people that I love. But I have been listening to her for years. So she just interviewed last week, um, Flora Bali. Love her, took her class, she's amazing. Tracy Verdugo, Jeannie Oliver, Lauren Horn, Susan's another coat. I can't even tell you the list is so long. And she asked me, and I was chatting about you guys too in the podcast, so you'll have to listen to it. That comes out next Wednesday, and there'll be links. I'll send out a newsletter, so if you guys um, aren't on my newsletter, just hop on over to my website and, and sign up for that, and you get a download too. So, all right. Love you guys. I want you to, um, oh my gosh, the artwork you guys are sending in is so fantastic. I saw a few things that came in earlier and I want to go check it out, but uh, keep sending them, keep sharing, keep loving on each other because you know what? That's what's going to make our world go round, okay? Mwah! And go Bills. All right. I'll see you guys next week. Okay. Bye. <laughs>